On April 30th, 2018, people all over the world awoke to complete darkness, even though according to the clocks, the sun should have already risen. Initially, most people likely assumed there was some sort of freak weather event, until news broadcasts revealed the horrifying and impossible truth. It was happening to everyone. For all intents and purposes, the sun was gone. Mass pandemonium erupted in all major cities. News outlets reported on looting and rioting, with the president issuing an order for all American citizens to stay in their homes. However, no more official information was ever shared, because soon after the sun's disappearance, all TV signals stopped. Thankfully for us, in this new sunless world, the internet still works, and there's one Twitter account dedicated to spreading as much information as possible on how to survive, as well as providing possible clues to what or who might be behind the sun's disappearance. If you're afraid of the dark, you might want to give this video a miss, because today we're going to be talking all about The Sun Vanished, the terrifying alternate reality that unfolded on Twitter before our very eyes. Could this Twitter page be a kind of gateway into a different nightmarish dimension? We don't know. All we know is that something horrifying has been happening on there, and we're just along for the ride. The Sun Vanish started tweeting around the same time that the Sun disappeared. Their first tweet was simply the word help. Over the course of the day, the oh. Sun Vanished, who we're going to call TSV mm -hmm. for short from now on, explained his situation. The sun hadn't come up that morning, and although he could clearly hear the tornado sirens blaring in the next county over, the local weather radar was completely clear. Seeking answers, he turned on the TV and recorded the local news report on the situation. The video posted on TSV's Twitter would prove to be the only record left of those news reports, because by the next day the channel had turned to static. TSV describes hearing gunshots and screams coming from the streets outside his home throughout the night of April 30th. Though he was terrified, on the morning of May 1st he ventured out into the world for the first time since the sun's disappearance. When he returned, he revealed that during his short trip outside, he'd made a chilling discovery. First of all, not only was the sun gone, but TSV was unable to see a single star or planet from where he was standing. At the time, the power grid was going out periodically, so there were no streetlights or lit up buildings providing the normal amount of light pollution. You might not think anything sounds odd at all about this, but that's because most people aren't aware of just how much light pollution can block out the stars in the sky. If you've ever been camping in a really remote part of the world, you'll know that in areas without light pollution from nearby cities, the entire Milky Way is visible from the Earth on a clear night. So the fact that TSV was unable to see a single star on a clear night with no light pollution indicated one of two possibilities. Either every star, the sun included, had gone out, or there was something blocking the Earth's view of them. The first option, though terrifying, was unlikely, since the distance between stars is so vast that even if they all somehow stopped emitting light at once, the light from many of them would still reach our solar system for billions of years after the light had stopped. As for the second option, how could it be possible for anything to completely block out the sun and stars across the entire Earth? TSV wondered the same thing, and he very quickly got an answer. In a video he posted on May 2nd, TSV films the trees in a wooded area around his house, showing the sky to illustrate the lack of stars. The video is silent aside from his footsteps and the faint sound of crickets. Suddenly, around 45 seconds into the video, he hears a mechanical buzzing approaching his location. TSV switches the light of his camera off, but keeps filming as a blinking red spotlight approaches. Later that day, TSV tweeted that someone had just run past his house, chased by two red spotlights, just like the one he saw in the woods. Whatever these things were, it was no doubt that they meant business, and they were connected to whatever had blocked out the sun. Over the next few days, TSV continued to document the state of things around him. The temperature had started to lower. This was an ominous sign that the end was coming. Even before the sun's disappearance, scientists had theorized about what might happen in such a situation, and their prediction, according to PopSci.com, was that without infrared radiation from the sun to heat it up, the Earth's average surface temperature would likely only take a week to drop below freezing. When the sun actually vanished, it seemed like the freezing process was taking a little longer than expected, but scientists had been wrong before. But the day after TSV tweeted about how cold it was getting, something weird happened. On March 3rd, he posted a video featuring the droning sound of something large and mechanical flying over his house. TSV said he had heard helicopters fly over his neighborhood before, and that definitely wasn't a helicopter. According to his tweets, as the craft flew over, he felt a wave of heat 
which increased the temperature in the room by at least 10 degrees. Now the pieces were starting to come together. The sun's disappearance wasn't a natural event, it was planned. The big question was, by who and for what reason? TSV managed to get back into contact with his friend Danian, who was driving to come and get him. Danian provided TSV and his followers with some very important advice. Keep the lights off and keep away from the windows. If you see a person standing outside, don't let them in. And most importantly of all, if you see a flashing light, hide. That was when TSV noticed a man in his driveway. Taking Danian's advice, TSV armed himself with a baseball bat and hid, but he could still hear frantic knocking from his front door. TSV called for anyone online to share any information at all about what was going on. He posted screen caps of a direct message he'd gotten from an unnamed informant from British Columbia, Canada, who added to Danian's previous advice about avoiding the lights. Don't look into the red light ever. If you do, you'll become like the guy who was at your door. While he waited for Danian, TSV grew increasingly paranoid. He claimed to hear screaming outside but could never seem to capture it on camera. He began to have strong suspicions that someone was breaking into his house at night while he was asleep and became convinced that the person texting him from Danian's number was an imposter. On May 8th, he posted a video of another drone flying past his window. At first, the light is white, but once it gets close to where TSV is standing, it turns bright red. Danian texted a photo to TSV later that day. It was a wall with Beware the Headlights spray painted onto it. Similar graffiti had been documented all around the world since the sun disappeared, headlights being the most common nickname for the strobing spotlight drones. On May 9th, TSV posted messages from another Twitter user nicknamed Tucker, who had been documenting his experiences and discoveries. According to Tucker, he and another survivor named Flynn had been traveling together until Flynn had looked into one of the red headlights, reducing him to a violent, mindless state. TSV continued to feel increasingly paranoid after finding his front door open one day after he woke up. After a few more days, he decided he'd had enough and left taking only the most essential supplies with him. First, he had hid out in a neighbor's house that had been abandoned. To his surprise, when he compared the tap water at his neighbor's house to some he'd brought from home, the water from his house looked darker. Could it have been whoever broke into his house had tampered with his water somehow? Hallucinations brought on by drugged water could explain why TSV seemed to be unable to capture the screams that he heard on camera. While looking through the house, TSV found a note listing some key information. Don't look into the light. Don't move, they see motion. Don't produce light, they will see. Another note found in the same house confirms why the house was left empty. It finally happened. I was reckless and I looked into the red light. The sun is back. All the pieces started to come together at this point in TSV's documentation. Whoever or whatever was behind this seemed to be engaging in a kind of psyop, weakening humanity through a mixture of drugged water, sleep schedule disruption, and vitamin D deprivation. The motion-sensing headlights were sent down to hypnotize and enslave anyone who was caught outside, and these hypnotized humans would then attack other survivors. However, if the entities in charge of the headlights intended to kill us, they could have done so just by letting the planet freeze. The artificial temperature control seemed to indicate that they had some purpose for the human race, and they needed us alive, at least for now. Reports of a new blue type of headlight started popping up in late May 2018. TSV details his encounter with one. It started with what he thought was one of the temperature control crafts hovering completely still over the house where he was hiding, producing vibrations strong enough to shake the house. It remained there throughout the night. After TSV finally managed to sleep, he woke up to see a blue light shining under the door. There were agonized screams from outside, then the blue light left. Tucker had his own encounter with a blue light, and after tweeting about it, he went silent for two months. TSV noticed the water and his new location had turned black, just like the water at his house. He began to hear banging on the doors and windows. Once again, he'd been found out. From the 17th to the 18th of June, TSV struggled to stay hidden as zombified people searched the house for him. On the 19th, he heard a car horn and a gunshot outside his house. Danian had finally made it. TSV and Danian traveled together from place to place, avoiding capture. While camping in one remote location, a storm started to roll in and illuminated against the sky by the lightning was a huge hovering craft. The craft seemed to be getting closer. TSV and Danian packed up and left for another campsite, but on July 12th, Danian went to look for fuel and never came back. He texted TSV coordinates for his new location, but they were a long way away. On July 1st, 2018, another Twitter account, Lost Sun News, joined the effort to document events, opening her DMs to anyone with information on how to survive. Much of the advice she documents on her page was already common knowledge by this point. Stay still and low to the ground if the headlights are near. Don't drink the black water. Don't let anyone inside. 
On July 15th, she posted a message from a man stationed at an Air Force base in Florida. He explained that the military had so far been unable to find an effective method of attacking the headlights, and all contact with other bases had been severed. Similar reports were sent into Lost Sun News from military personnel in Turkey, Poland, and Russia. A Russian soldier claimed that they'd managed to shoot one of the smaller ships out of the sky with an anti-aircraft gun, but a larger mothership was above the base that would easily destroy the entire area if it crashed to Earth. Through all of the reports, one core survival method became clear – avoid hot spots. Since the ships were artificially raising the temperature, colder areas indicate less activity and were therefore safer. After Danian's disappearance, TSV found a new car and started looking for cold spots. His advice for his followers? Dead trees in an area is a good sign that the ships haven't been through. TSV spent from October 2018 to March 2019 traveling to Danian's coordinates, dodging headlights and light zombies and restocking on supplies wherever he could. Through those months, there was one mystery more than any other that was on everyone's mind. Why did these invaders want us alive? Right now, it's impossible to know the answer, but if you want to stay up to date on the state of things in the sunless world, Lost Sun News, Tucker, and The Sun Vanished are all still updating, even two years after The Sun's initial disappearance. Maybe someday their efforts will uncover a way to destroy the ships and eventually bring The Sun back for good. But for now, all we have are mysteries, darkness, and fear. Now check out the SCP Foundation Explained, or this other video over here.